Well, hello, everybody. Welcome in once again to an al another alumni spotlight right here on the YouTube page for the Queen Sports Network. As always, I'm Mike Glennon, and today I am joined by former Queens lacrosse player in Jordan Barash. And uh, Jordan, I appreciate you taking some time out. We'll get into your uh, busy schedule here in a couple of moments, but always nice to see a uh, familiar face back here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. This was, this was a very cool email to get, so I appreciate sure. it. Absolutely. Well, like I say, you know, it's one of those things that what I love about doing this is catching up with former Queen students. One, figuring out what the journey was to bring you to Queens, and then, of course, catching up with you because there are so many cool things that happen to everybody that graduates from here after the fact. And, of course, uh, you're kind of living that life right now. And uh, you just took a job back in January with the New England Free Jacks of Major League Rugby. And, uh, you know, first off, how's that going? And, uh, you know, what, what kind of led you to want to do that kind of work? And what are your responsibilities? Yeah, so um, it was it was a very crazy kind of decision to make, um, but I I have had such a great time here. Uh, this was our first full season. Last year was the team's inaugural season, but COVID shut it down five weeks mm -hmm. in, and that was that was five weeks of them on the road. So April third, when we first hosted our first home match of the season, that was. That was the team's first home match of wow. you know history for them so that was very cool to to be able to oversee that um so with that you know i've i've always had a passion for rugby i've always been a fan of it uh when i saw that the team was hiring i was like you know what i'll give it a go i'll see i'll see what happens um so i am now the uh, the head of engagement and experiences which awesome. um that was kind of a uh, a self-proclaimed title i worked with my ceo okay. on that so Essentially, I, I oversee everything game day um, from the theme to the vendors we load in to, um, you know, the minute by minute breakdown of the game. Sure. So, um, you know, a lot more that go into those games that people don't see than there are that people actually do see, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I kid you not. My my minute by minute is down to the second. Um, <laughs> very so, much, very much. you know, I, I can understand that. I can understand. Yes. That. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, 707 and 15 seconds. I better have pyro going <laughs> and at 707 and 30 seconds. I better have the anthem going. And um, but it's crazy. It's been such a whirlwind. It definitely took me out of my comfort zone. Sure. Um, but I just, I have a big passion for sports and to be able to take that to a new league like this, that's been around for four seasons. Um, it's been amazing. So it's a wild ride and I'm ready to, uh, to get into next year. <laughs> Well, listen, you know, you, you, not only did you get to go in and basically, you know, proclaim your own job title. I mean, that's some good pull right out of the gate uh, at an organization. But the other thing, not very often do you hear uh, the words pyro uh, involved in, in a daily job task. So uh, there you go. That sounds interesting to me anyway. I don't know. But, you know, looking at kind of what you've done before that, and really, let's go back to you coming to Queens and, you know, what got you started in the game of lacrosse, of course, a goalkeeper. And, uh, you know, it's funny it's something about lacrosse goalkeepers, very creative people. Uh, and of course, uh, that you being one of them in terms of what you do nowadays for a living. So can you talk about what got you into the sport of lacrosse, what you loved about it, and kind of how you've used those lessons now in your professional career? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I will say, you put it very nicely that we're creative. Um, <laughs> everyone else I've talked to is like, you've got to have a couple screws loose. Hey, if you're, uh, if you're getting that ball <laughs> flung in as fast as it comes, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't want to say screw loose, but you know what I mean? Creative, you know, yeah, you, you, know, it's you, you nice. like to create things. Yes, there we go. Um, but yeah, no, so my, uh, my dad grew up on Long Island and he mm. played lacrosse uh, up until, you know, the Naval Academy um and he was a goalkeeper there so okay i had always wanted to play when i was old enough to start playing we were weirdly enough stationed out in missouri which uh they had never seen a lacrosse stick sure. um, i brought one in for show and tell and they were like what is that <laughs> uh, Fair so there, there was no way for me to really join a team out there um, but worked with my brother and my dad in the backyard. And then we moved from Missouri to Rhode Island. And the mm. first thing I, I said to my parents was sign me up for a team. Um, like that. that was in sixth grade. And then, uh, in seventh grade, uh, is when I stepped into the goal because we showed up to a game and our goalie had a broken arm. <laughs> so okay. our coach trial by our fire. Coach looked at it. Yeah. 
he uh, he looked around at all of us and was like, who wants to step in the goal today? And I was like, oh, I don't really want to run. So sure, I'll do it. So, yeah, you'll take your chances, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and it, it definitely worked out for the better. And uh, that's, that's how I ended up at Queens. Um, one of the coaches reached out to me my sophomore year, uh, had seen me at a tournament and was interested and um, kept in touch and then, you know, came down for a visit, fell in love. And it, it was an amazing time with the program. Um, and it was an amazing time at Queens in general. So awesome. Awesome. Well, you know, like you said, you had an amazing time here at Queens. Of course, you did very well academically, and you even got a chance in 2016 to uh, head to the Rio Olympics. Uh, and, and, you know, can you talk a little bit about that experience and kind of, I have to imagine that was kind of the ceiling of the deal, if you will, uh, of wanting to go down this path, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I um, obviously have always been a, a huge lacrosse fan. So mm -hmm. Um, in high school, I started working for Major League Lacrosse as a marketing okay. and communications intern. Um, and through that kind of built up my resume, knew I wanted to go into sport management. Uh, Queens didn't have a program when I got there. Sure. So yep. my, my sophomore year, they launched it. I switched. And then um, my, my junior year is when they announced the Rio program. And I was like, oh man, like I'm going to be graduated by, by the time that happens. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the John Belk International Program Group um, and the directors for those programs, Bob Page and um, Joe Cornelius, were so amazing working with me. Uh, we got it worked out where I could go on the trip. I could mm -hmm. still walk with my class in May. Awesome. My diploma just was a couple, couple months delayed. Um, and it was, I mean, I still talk about that trip. You know, I, I still talk to those people from that trip um, sure. to go down there and, and to experience the Olympics in person is just, if anyone ever gets the opportunity to do it, I just push them to, to, to go because it's sure. one of those things that to see patriotism, like obviously, you know, we get that Memorial Day weekend, 4th of July, all that stuff. But to see it from so many other countries on one stage mm -hmm. um, in a celebration of sports is just, I mean, it's every sport person's dream. So sure. um, to go there and do that was just, I mean, life altering. Um, and then also, you know, while I was there, uh, I got a chance to go to rugby because it had just mm. returned for the first time in 80, 90 years. So yes, that is um, correct. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was wild to go to that. Weirdly enough, I met uh, Nate Ebner, who was with the Patriots at the time. Mm -hmm. um, he's now actually one of my bosses because hey. he's one of the co-owners of the Free Jacks. There you go. Small so. world, I'm telling you. Small world, you meet him in Rio, and now you work with him. There you go. That's, that's exactly. pretty unbelievable. Exactly, yep. It's amazing. It's amazing where it's, you know, it's one of those stories where it's amazing where sports can take you and, and no matter what side, you know, you're on in terms of whether it's on the field or off the field, it's just, this is such a cool avenue to go down. And, you know, now you mentioned you were a sports management major and uh, one of the first to actually have that major. And now you talk to a lot of athletes and I'd say a vast majority of them are in some sort of sports business, sports marketing, sports management, whatever it might be. So it's a fast growing field to say the very least. And obviously you've been able to ride that wave uh, throughout your professional career, correct? Oh yeah. Yep. Um, so, so out of, you know, out of college, out of Queens, um, did the Olympics with, with the program and then uh, took a little break to kind of figure out what I wanted to do next steps. Um, wasn't sure if I wanted to go back to Major League Lacrosse or if I wanted to explore something else. Okay. Uh, ended up getting the opportunity to go to Octagon, uh, which is, you know, it's, it's one of the leaders in sport management yep. um, and agency. Um, so joined them up in the Rhode Island area. So I got to go yep. back to my roots. Hey, there you go. Um, yep. And, and I was overseeing marketing and communications for professional golf events around the country, which wow. was very different than, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, a, little less, a little less action, I guess, uh, than what you yeah. were used to, but. Yeah. Uh, if someone hits you with a golf club, you get in a lot more trouble than you do on the lacrosse field. Okay. So. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I, I could see that being a thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you don't really see a lot of uh, contact in golf. but no. um, you If you know, do, it'd be a sight to behold, though, I will say. Oh, yeah. ESPN, not top 10. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, but no, it, it was very cool. I got to travel. And the nice thing about golf is that 
wherever it's taking place, it's most likely going to be nice weather. Um, and nine times out of 10, I, I ended up somewhere with water. So it was amazing. Um, Fair enough. And I then, like that. yeah, it was great. Um, switched from that account to, uh, to an account back in Charlotte. So I okay. uh, came back down to the Queen City and was working on um, client engagement for a client that uh, worked a lot, ironically enough, with New England teams. So was based in Charlotte, was coming back up to work with the Patriots and the Red Sox and the Yankees and all that fun stuff. Okay. Um, and just kind of, you know, was, was keeping a pulse on rugby and you know, the opportunity arised and I jumped at it. So, <laughs> hey, well, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to take that leap and uh, hope for the best. And, you know, if you're, if you're good at what you do and you're confident in what you do, obviously good things, uh, only good things can come from a situation like that. So uh, congratulations on getting the job and everything. And, you know, let's talk about your time here at Queens a little bit more and, and kind of, you know, what that meant to you and the experiences you had, you know, you mentioned obviously going after graduation to the Rio Olympics, but can you talk a little bit more about your education that you got here and kind of how you think that prepared you going forward? forward? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, that's, that's actually a great question. Uh, I just spoke on a, um, a panel for high school students mm. on behalf of Queens last week awesome. um, about that specifically. And, um, you know, I, I have to say, I, I can't commend Queens enough for the time they take and the effort they take to put amazing staff in place. Mm. Um, so, you know, it, it was one of those things that I, I had had experience in the sports world. So, you know, going into the classes, um, it's sports is such a hands-on thing, right? Like you can sure. read about it, you can watch it on TV, but to really understand the nitty gritty of working on it, you need that experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think in a classroom situation, Queens knocks it out of the park with mm -hmm. this management program you know dr dr lyons um i know he's no longer there but you know him and, and dr jones getting that program off the ground sure. um they did amazing you know it, it wasn't just going in and opening up the textbook and reading it was for sport finance like it was going in and being told all right make a team of three here's your budget <laughs> you're now the owner of an nba team we're gonna have a mock draft i like that and you need to figure out how you're gonna budget for your players to have a successful season you know and it, it was the coolest thing ever you know because that's that's real life like that is what yep. you're going to get with sports um and that's something that you know i've seen with rugby like we we have salary caps here mm -hmm. you know and i was like all right we gotta figure this out like <laughs> yeah. um i don't really get much involved with that i leave that to the rugby side and they do a bang up job with it sure um but just having that, yeah, having that, you know, real life experience, that applicable experience in the classroom and to make it fun and engaging, right? Because then essentially yep. after that draft, like we we played a fantasy season in sport finance and, you know, if a player got injured, like we still had to pay out the salary. Sure. So yeah. Like, oh man, like we, we just, we just wasted a million dollars on a guy that's on the bench. It's, oh. it, it, it's, it's amazing when you look at it from the other side, you see all these people signing these huge contracts and you're like, oh man, that's great for them. And all of a sudden you're sitting there going, wait a minute, as the organization, all of a sudden we have to pay them for that, right? So. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, the Red Sox, they're still paying out, um, who is it? Manny Ramirez? <laughs> yeah. They're, they're still paying him out till 26. Mm -hmm. And he had been traded. Um, Sp so. Spoken like a true Red Sox fan. Spoken like a true Red Sox <laughs> yeah. fan. So, you know, it, it was wild and it was so cool that like, that was the classroom environment, you know, like, yeah, it, it wasn't just like, all right, you know, here's a spreadsheet, balance, balance it. It's sure. like, oh man, uh, it's not what I got in sports. <laughs> yeah. Real, real life, uh, so real life really application. Cool, you know, the... Yes, exactly. And I yep. think across the board, you know, not just the sport management program, just the, across the board in general at Queens, they do a great job with that. You know, my science course, I had to take uh, geology um, and they took us to a, um, the gold mine, you know, mm. and we got to go walk through the tunnels there and, and talk through the rock formations and everything else. And everything I did there, there was some sort of real life application. Sure. Um, so it wasn't just learning to learn. It was learning to better yourself outside of the classroom. So yeah. 
Well, you know, you mentioned in sports management, sports marketing, sports, you know, anything sports entertainment wise, it's such a hands-on thing in terms of learning. And like you said, there's only so much you can read in a book. You, you have to be able to actually put it in a hands-on application. And I know, you know, we're, we're creating a broadcast club coming up this year. And that's part of it is giving kids that ability to be able to, from the day they set foot here on campus to the day they leave, to be able to have that regular hands-on application for the entire point. That's a big thing, especially in an industry like this, because, well, let's be honest, uh, it's a very fast-paced industry, and you have to be able to learn on the fly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's, you know, you, you have to be prepared for the craziness that is event day. Um, mm -hmm. my, my first match with the team, um, I'm pretty sure everything that could have gone wrong went Naturally. wrong. Naturally. To, like, to the point that our broadcast truck that had brought in a generator, the generator exploded. Oh, you know, so man. literally everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. And it's, <laughs> and it's like, so. all right, you know, how do we roll with this? Like, how do we make this work? Like, how can we fix it? Sure. Um, so you, you gotta be, you gotta be prepared for the craziness. You gotta be prepared for the stress and mm. you gotta be prepared for the long hours. But that's where, you know, that's where the sports industry is just so amazing because the passion yeah. that people have to be there, like it, you really, you have to be, you have to be all in hundred percent to, uh, yeah. <laughs> to hack it out here. Cause you know, it's wild, but it's, it's so fulfilling. And, you know, I, I told my CEO the other day, I was like, the reason I love this is because on game days, when the fans show up and you hear them roaring in the stands and you see the smiles and you see the team at the end, like, you know, high-fiving fans, taking photos, like, it's just like, you can't beat that feeling. Like no. the camaraderie that sports provides is just, it's, you know, it's, it's selfish. I feel like for me, because I'm like, you know, this, yeah, it's a lot of hard work, but like, I take so much joy and so much pride out of this. Yeah. You know, I, I always make the joke. I say, listen, I get paid to go to sports games for a living, you know, and don't get me wrong. There is an infinite amount of work and maybe work that people don't understand that goes into an hour and a half to a two hour game that there are weeks of preparation. They understand it on the athlete side of things, but maybe not on the production side of things. But like you said, uh, it is more than fulfilling. That is to say the very least. And uh, glad to hear it. That echoed uh, throughout different aspects and also, of course, with different sports. And, you know, uh, the, the rugby team, the rugby program getting started up here at Queens a couple of years ago, um, you know, they were 2000 na 2019 national champions. And now uh, they're having Thomas Morgan, a, a very well-known filmmaker, is making a documentary film on him right now um, about, uh, you know, that rise and everything. So uh, rugby is a massively growing sport, and I think you're getting into the right time, to say the very least. You know, before I let you go, you mentioned a little while ago kind of that unique perspective that you have, and it's not a perspective that a lot of folks have. And that, of course, is um, you grew up in a military family. You had to move a lot. And so, you know, you saw different parts of the country can you just talk a little bit about kind of how you've used those experiences in your own life and, and now that like you said you've been open you've opened yourself up to opportunities all over the country and look where it's led you so you know what can you say to folks in terms of that maybe have or have not experienced that yeah absolutely I mean um you know the the great thing about being a military brat is that you don't know a stranger um, you know, wherever you go, you're essentially having to start over, reintroduce yourself. So there's no time to be shy. Um, you know, you, you got to be quick to, to just make connections and to maintain those connections. Um, so that's, you know, it's been amazing. I've lived out off the West Coast. Um, I've, I lived out West, which was, or in, in the Midwest, which was just very weird for Navy. Cause there, there's not a lot of water there. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You, you mentioned the Missouri and I was like, well, all right, man, I'll make, there, there are some rivers out that way. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we were out there for recruiting base, but it was, uh, whew, that, that was a rough year and a half. So I was like, where's the beach? Sure. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> So, but um, yeah, no, it, it was amazing because I made all these connections all over the country and, um, you know, weirdly enough, like it's, it's come full circle um, where these, these other military families, they become like family to you because mm -hmm. you typically get stationed in the same area. You typically have kids all around the same age. So a lot of my really, really close friends 
um, I consider them more like cousins because, you know, they're, they're all military brats just like me. Um, and when I get to go to all these different events for sports, um, I, you know, I typically know someone in market, um, which is amazing because, you know, when I was out in the California for Pebble Beach, that was one of the last programs I did uh, sure. with Octagon yeah. before joining um, the Free Jacks. You know, I, I got to go see my godparents' awesome. uh, sister. So okay. by like, you know, my, my aunt-in-law, so to speak, or aunt sure. once removed, whatever that is, you know? Yeah. Um, and that was great. You know, I, I was working long days and I was like, you know, Auntie Oli, I just want to hug. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like that. And I'm sure she was more than, well, more than willing to oblige. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's really nice. And, you know, with the Free Jacks, I uh, traveled with the team to Houston. And again, same family. Um, the son, who's, who's like a cousin to me, his best friend from high school growing up plays for the team in Houston, weirdly oh, enough. Oh, all right. So, um, it was kind of weird being on opposite ends of that, but, uh, you know, it was great to see him and his girlfriend at the game and just be like, Hey guys, you know, like we got brunch the next day, we caught up. Um, but I feel like now with that experience, you know, with growing up, with getting out of my comfort zone and just constantly making those connections, um, it's, it's great to have a network all over the country. So, sure. you know, if anyone's thinking about it or, you know, thinking about just traveling in general and, you know, packing up and moving, but being scared about, uh, about the actual move to a new market, like it's just you know, it's, it's a great experience because you also learn a lot about yourself. So, yeah. um, yeah. and it was a great experience for, for our family too, because I will say growing up, you know, my brother, sister, and I, we stayed very close because nine times be. out of 10, <laughs> we would drive to a new place. So those <laughs> sure. cross country trips, they well, were a lot. <laughs> as, speaking from someone who has now done that three times in the last three and a half years, I know what exactly what you're saying, and you get to know yeah. people on a ride, uh, uh, whether you want to or not, right? Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, but no, you know, it's it's great. Um, I wouldn't change anything, you know, from my childhood. I wouldn't change anything from, you know, the past five years since I've been out of Queens. Um, sure. You know, I think I moved. I've moved three times now already since being out of school, um, but they've all been great moves and. Um, you know, I think I've definitely, definitely, uh, found my home with the free jacks though for a bit. Awesome. So I, uh, I'm going to try to put some roots down up here in Boston. So, well, Hey, uh, Boston's not a bad place to be. I'm just saying, but I, I have a lot of family from Boston and, uh, sorry for you new, you new York folks out there, but I'm just saying Boston's not a bad place to be. So, uh, Jordan, I appreciate you joining us. Of course, best of luck in the new venture. Uh, you know, I know you said you've traveled a lot in the last five years, but obviously all for good things. You got a great head on your shoulders. And of course, uh, right there in the thick of things. And of course, we wish you the best of luck and we're always keeping an eye on you and uh, make sure you check in every now and again. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mike. I appreciate it. My, my pleasure. All right, Jordan, you, you go back and uh, get back to work. I know you guys are uh, just finishing up the regular season, but you still got a lot more to do in the off season, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're already <laughs> rolling for 22. <laughs> hey, you, you got to always be looking to the next one. So, Jordan, I appreciate you joining us. That's going to do it for another Alumni Spotlight right here on the YouTube page. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Get all the new content from Queen Sports Network. And, of course, check us out on queenathletics.com as well. For Jordan Barash, I'm Mike Glennon. Enjoy the rest of your day. And, as always, go Royals.